What's up, everybody? It is Brian with First Shot Tactical. Back with another video for you guys real quick here. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing another Amazon find, the True Glow LPVO 1-6 to variable site. Uh, we're just going to do a quick little what's in the box that comes with it, as well as a short little review. Um, I say short, this might be a little longer, but feel free to fast forward to what you need. So, First things first, uh, I'll put the link in the description for this optic that I got, uh, but it's the True Glow one. And let's go ahead and open it up. In the box, what comes with it is the actual optic, uh, the LPVO, with the mount as well. We'll set that there. It comes with a little uh, owner's manual thing or how to set up. And this is actually pretty nice. It actually comes with batteries for it because it's a illuminated uh, reticule. So it's actually pretty nice they pack those with you. Um, then we also get the Allen wrenches. One is for putting it on the Picatinny rail. The other one's for... Uh, the screws to mount the scope to the mount and then we also get this guy here which is the um, I'll explain this in a sec it's for swapping I think if you're using um, 308 rounds versus 556 or 223 you can see here it says 223 55 grain you can swap that out and put 308 168 grain so that way um, that matches up with the caliber rifle you put it on uh, so actually pretty nice that they packed all this with you um, and then obviously you get just a little cleaning cloth then too so that's it as far as what comes in the box for you not too bad for a budget friendly optic from amazon i picked this up for around 160 dollars and i think right now they're going for like 180 and i'm guessing that the price will keep going up so if you're looking to buy one, budget-friendly one, um, hopefully this video helps and get one before the price keeps going up on them. But with that, let's actually talk about the actual optic itself. Um, overall, quality is not bad. When you grab it, it feels sturdy. It feels good. Uh, it does come with the mount. The one thing I dislike is that they put their name on it everywhere. So you might get shamed at the range for using an Amazon optic. But hey, whatever doesn't bake, uh, break the bank and you can buy more ammo, I'm all for that. And again, not actually a bad optic from what I've used it for so far. I've had this for about six months. I've shot it on I have a 223 10.5 inch rifle that I've been using it on. And uh, thoroughly surprised with um how it performs and overall quality of it so let's go on a little bit more what we have here so on each end it comes with dust covers and these are actually definitely a pro in my eyes um especially when you're talking glass and an optic it's nice to have the dust covers and these are actually decent quality ones they're magnetic so they snap right on flip right up snaps right back on same for the back and pretty nice to have i don't think even like the expensive ones a lot of them you have to buy that separate you know so nice that it actually comes with that on the back here it has the to adjust the plus minus the whole thing will move here as well so just like on a binoculars or any other optic so as far as the focus goes and then moving forward we have the uh throw lever which again another pro here it comes with a throw lever Normally you have to buy this separate for the expensive optics and put it on. And I've seen like Vortex, they sell these for like 60 bucks. So awesome that it comes with it. And it definitely makes night and day difference when moving the variable uh, zoom back and forth from my experience. So again, right here, you have the throw level on that dial and throw lever, sorry. And then you can go ahead and see where it's two magnification, three magnification. And this one goes all the way to six and that's the max on it then. But makes it real easy to dial it back and forth and it's just the same as any other optic um it's sturdy to where this isn't going to get knocked around while shooting but it's not too sturdy to where it's like grunt force to get it to turn so i think it's right at a good level so nothing to complain about on that as far as that so pretty nice um let's talk about the elevation and windage here now uh, as I already mentioned, it has the exchangeable caps for this. So if you're putting it on a 308 or a different rifle, you can use the other one that I showed. But obviously, I was using 223 and didn't mind too much uh, swapping it or trying to do that. But as far as adjusting these, these are nice. It's actually a lockable turret. So it won't turn, won't budge at all right there. You actually have to pull it up. And you can see then it's red. And then now... You can go ahead and dial it in and click. 
So like for, again, for being a budget-friendly optic, I was surprised it came with these lockable turrets. Again, there's some like $500 LPVOs that don't even have lockable turrets. So same thing on this side, pull it. You can go ahead and dial it in, lock it back down, and that's secure then. So you can make your adjustment, one click, lock it back in, or however many you need to, locks in. And again, no complaints on that. And I would say this is definitely a pro um, for this optic. So uh, with that, uh, nothing really on the front besides the magnetic cover that we had there. Uh, if we move to this side here, this is where uh, the battery is housed then. Um, again, the batteries that they were generous enough to give you three extra ones with. Uh, we can go ahead and pop this off because this is a illuminated reticule, which I'll show you in a bit here as well. So if we want to unscrew that, you'll find that there's the battery on the back. I actually want to do it because this will shoot off. But it has the classic 2032, the CR2032 reticule or uh, battery to power this. And if we actually take a look on the side here, this is where we can change the illumination on it. Zero. Let's see if we can actually see through it here. Um, I'll actually cut the video here in a bit and I'll show you that how it works. But as far as the operation, it's zero, so it's not on. And then you can see here it has G for green. It'll do a green reticule through the magnification and you can dial it for brightness. So lower brightness to higher brightness. And then zero again is off. And then same thing here. Now we have red on. So it'll be low red and you can see this white marker here is where it's at all the way up to a brighter red and then back again it clicks on there and that's off then so again it's nice you can actually hear it clicks there so you know when it's off um so again pros all around everything in the middle here locking turrets uh green and red uh illumination good dials for it not too bad i was surprised uh honestly for all that um again for a lower budget optic uh, let's talk about the mount then. This is where I would say the downside is. As you can see here, it's kind of cattywampus and not all the way down. And that's the same on both sides. I have tried so many times to readjust, move this back and forth on it, tighten this one, loosen that one, etc. And this is kind of the end result every time. I don't think their uh, mount they made is, it's probably like a universal one for they have a couple other uh, models that they sell. So this is what it looks like when it's in this one. So I would say that'd be the one downside. But as far as going on the on the rail, it's pretty standard for Picatinny up top. Uh, goes on, screws on. That Allen wrench that came with it is for that. And no issues with that. But overall, I don't know if I'd trust this 100%. Um, again, as far as sturdiness, especially when you can see it looking like that, I'd rather have something more secure and clamped down on it because after you know hundreds of rounds this could spin or get loose um and you might run into some issues down the road so that'd be my one complaint so far is just on the mount there but first impressions overall uh not too bad so with that let's go ahead and actually open up the reticules and i'm going to change the camera so that way we can see what it looks like actually when looking down the site all right now we got the optic set up here you can actually see what the reticules look like down the site here and this is at 1x and when i got this out of the box i had so much fun playing with this this is actually like the coolest thing ever to zoom it in with the variable zoom so we have the throw lever over here so we're at one you crank it around we're now at three and then we keep going and we're all at six there all the way zoomed in and if you notice there honestly like when you're at six it's gets a little you know fuzzy it's not the best glass but that's what you get for the budget of this optic if you back it back down to three two and one i'd say that's where it excels the most um it's pretty good at those as far as focus and everything but again overall not bad though a uh, ton of fun playing with the variable zoom and getting to shoot with that and most of the time i was honestly shooting like one to three i wasn't doing anything too far out from what i've used it for so far but from one to three awesome uh, four or five and six okay but again not terrible and it is again just so cool to be able to zoom in with this optic and 
be able to have that capability as well. So with that then too, the other thing is the illumination on the side over here. So if we wanted to uh, turn the reticules on, all I have to do is spin it like I showed before. And you'll see the red actually just clicked on there. And it might actually be kind of difficult to see. You'll see I turned it off back to black. And then now it's back to red. Off camera, it's a lot easier to see. I think it's more of a camera thing. And I prefer using the red on it. Um, if I spin it all the way around though, we'll see that it'll lower in brightness. If I can keep it steady here. And then it'll actually turn all the way off. And then if we want to go ahead and activate it to green, all I do is spin it and you can see the green there just clicked on. A lot easier to see. And then again, back off. And then now it's back on and that's the green. And that's what you get as far as the illuminated reticules. Um, nice feature uh, as far as if you have it on and you're like just kind of plinking in the yard. Easier to pick up for sure than just the black reticules. So definitely a pro, but... <laughs> Honestly, overall, it's not the best illuminated. Um, on the bottom cross here, it's hard to see on camera. When you have it on red, the red actually shadows out over the black. So it's a little off. So it's almost like it's skewed a little bit. But hey, it's, it's what you get for the price. But not terrible. Nice to have. And I'd say just another feature on it. So with that, uh, that's kind of the overall reticule as far as the zooming and the uh, red and green we got there. So let's go ahead and jump back to it and get some final thoughts here. All right, we're back at the workbench here. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. Kind of the pros cons rundown and overall thoughts for what I think with this, uh, Amazon true glow op optic. So on the pro side, I would say, or actually let's start with the con side cons. The biggest one I'd say is this mount as you see here. And as I talked about, just a little cattywampus doesn't fit the optic perfectly and I would not consider this 100% reliable as far as you know duty or you know heavy wear and tear on it probably these screws are going to break over time or it's just going to lose zero and spin in there um, so just overall eh, you know might want to go with a different mount if you are going to use this or just be weary that you know this isn't the best one. Uh, second thing is the durability kind of talked about that a little bit with the mount overall, like it feels good. It looks good, but uh, for a hundred and you know, 50, 160 bucks, I want to go, uh, torture testing this. I imagine we'll probably break it. We'll get moisture in it and we'll run into some issues. But if you're just using this for plinking and recreational or, uh, you know, trying this out as an LPVO just to see, I would definitely put this as a, okay. In that category, um, the other thing on the cons list, I would say is the eye relief. So with this one, um, I have it at one X here, but I probably won't be able to see it, but you got to find the sweet spot for mounting this on your gun. If you have your face here, there's about a four inch or five inch gap where your eyes need to be to see directly in this. And that changes as you zoom in. So one to three, it's not bad. You can probably stay at the same spot, but once you're at that six, uh, it gets pretty iffy. You got to really find that sweet spot. And as far as, you know, right around, you might run into some issues with that. And it's just not the greatest as far as the glass to offer a better visible area. So I'd say that as a con, just like overall eye relief. And I have used, uh, some of the higher end, like a vortex, like thousand dollar optic. And you can definitely, especially at one X, you can see the difference of the plane that you have and that reticule you can almost see it from one edge all the way to the other edge without any of that black like you see on this here so just a heads up on that but again kind of what you get for the price point uh and then lastly uh the red and green thing it's nice to have and i think it's a cool feature but overall uh i think it's just like a little gimmicky on this um as i mentioned the like reticules in there you won't be able to see it but it's almost like skewed off a little bit from the black etched in lines there so it's not 100 percent lined up i don't know if it's just this one that i got or if that's all of them but i feel like it could be a little bit nicer but again for the price it's not going to be perfect not terrible but just kind of a little downside there uh the pro side now definitely love these turrets these turrets are great as far as the locking and rotating really sturdy so i think that's definitely a plus for both of these um pretty nice for again the price we're talking here the other one is again it's okay or it's cool that it has the mag magnification but i think it's just kind of gimmicky a little bit um and then the biggest thing by far is the price is the pro point on this 
Um, oh, one other uh, downside I want to mention first is, um, as a con, is the weight of this thing. I would say that's like the number one con on the list, actually, is this guy is heavy. I have this mounted, or I was using it on a 10 and a half inch AR, and I feel like I have a brick on top. So I'm used to running red dots like a Sig Romeo or a Vortex uh, Optic, and obviously that's a lot lighter, but this thing's heavy. So just a heads up for that, it's probably better use on a 16 inch AR or something a little longer, but when you're using it on a shorty, uh, it's heavy. And again, I bet when you get one of the higher quality ones, they have better materials and lighter weight. So it'd be probably better from that standpoint. But for this guy, just know you're mounting a brick on top. Um, but the last point, as I kind of mentioned as the biggest pro is the price point for this. And this kind of brings me to my concluding point. So for the price point for this, for, you know, 150 to 180 bucks, I think this is the perfect optic for somebody looking to try LPVOs that's been using red dots for a while or red dots and magnifiers. This is the perfect price point to try it and see if you want to break the bank and go ahead and buy one of the higher quality ones. Um, I think the next option above, if you wanted to try and get something else like a vortex one, I think it's about 250 to 300 bucks. And that's typically without the mount here too. So you're talking 300 to $350 just to go ahead and see if you like an LPVO, which you might not. So I think this is a great starter LPVO to try as far as like recreational, see if you like it on one of your ARs. And then if you're like, yes, I'm sold. I definitely want a one to six one. Go ahead and then make that purchase for something a little more higher quality and spend a little more money on it. Um, as far as like using this on any kind of like duty rifle, definitely do not recommend. Um, this is more so for target practice, recreational or plinking in the backyard, possibly a little bit of competition shooting if you want to. But again, uh, if you're getting serious about it, I would go ahead and invest in one of the higher quality ones. But overall, I uh, hope this was helpful. That's kind of my concluding thoughts. I Not a bad thing, though, as far as from the price point again. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, definitely going to be purchasing something more higher quality down the road here. And we'll kind of compare the two and see how that goes. But for now, um, pretty cool. Pretty fun to uh, review this and check it out and put it on some other guns. But if you guys have questions or uh, any anything to let me know that I missed or want to know, let me know down in the comments below. Um, if this is helpful, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, we'll have some more videos coming, uh, some other optics as well as some other install videos. And if you guys want to see anything, let me know as well. But hope this was helpful again. As always, have fun shooting, and we'll see you next time.